So, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. I'm Stepan Schindelash. I work for Oracle Labs, as been said. And uh, at Oracle Labs, we're working on a, a project called Kral VM. And with this project, you can combine R and Python. Uh, so, I'm going to talk about this. Uh, so, let me first introduce what uh, Kral VM is. Kral VM is a, a universal virtual machine. So, you can think about it as like a, a common infrastructure for running applications written in uh, different programming languages. So this, like, uh, compared to uh, GNUAR, for example, and uh, Python, the reference implementation of Python, they are both uh, different uh, programs. They, uh, except for very low-level libraries, then they don't share anything. Uh, and, for example, GNUAR has its own garbage collector. Python has its own garbage collector. GNUAR has its own representation of uh, objects that live within uh, R. Uh, Python has its own. Uh, representation of those. Uh, with uh, what we do with GraalVM is that we have this architecture where uh, you have uh, several components that, as a as a language implementer, you can reuse. It's all built on the top of uh, Hotspot uh, JVM. That's Java Virtual Machine, but uh, that's just an implementation detail. And in the the JVM, which itself is a is a very advanced uh, virtual machine with like uh, years years of uh, development, uh, in 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 the Hotspot JVM, we replace the compiler with a compiler that we've written. That's called Graal Compiler, and uh, we provide a framework for implementing programming languages on top of this, and that's called Truffle. And the uh, Graal Compiler and Truffle sort of work together in order to make the the, the languages run. Faster, uh, Gravium comes in two editions. Uh, there is a community edition which is uh, free for any use, production or development, and uh, sources are available on GitHub. It's open source; uh, you can just download it and, and use it. Uh, there are uh, several programming languages implemented on top of uh, the Gravium platform. We will focus today on uh, two: uh, that's R and Python. The R implementation, uh, the Gravium R implementation, is called FastR. Uh, um, I've had a talk about FastR earlier today, so I'll just go briefly through this. FastR is a GNUR compatible implementation of uh, the R programming language, so it's something different than the GNUR itself. It's not a fork of GNUR, but uh, it reuses some parts uh, from GNUR, uh, especially the, the standard libraries, uh, meaning the base packages. Uh, it's uh, open source, it's licensed under GPL v3, uh, it's a derivative. Uh, of uh, GNUAR, so it will always be GPL3, a GPL uh, uh, licensed thing. Uh, it, it runs on both versions of Gravium, the, the, the community one and the enterprise as well. Uh, why would you ever think about using FastR instead of GNUAR? So reason number one is performance. Early today, again, I was showing this example of um, uh, R code from this article by uh, Tyler Morgan Wall. It's uh, uh, code that does uh, ray tracing in R, and uh, the, the code uh, itself calls uh, a Fortran routine. So uh, what I did, I replaced the Fortran routine with uh, equivalent R code. And I ran the whole thing uh, in GNUAR and in uh, FastR. And this, uh, this is uh, execution time, so lower is better. And this, uh, this bar, this is GNUAR running the pure R code without the Fortran code. So it runs in about 84 seconds. And for the same thing, FastR and the enterprise graph can run in 1.5. Five seconds, which is something like 60 times faster. This is after a warm up, so after five iterations, FastR and all the Gravium languages are particularly good uh, with uh, applications that are long running and that they have enough time to uh, warm up the first iterations. It's uh, slightly, slightly worse. The second reason why to use FastR is that it's compatible with, with GNUAR and to the extent that we can, for example, run ggplot2. So these two uh, plots were, uh, are actually SVG images that I've created with FastR and ggplot2. Uh, Graal Python is another language implemented on top of uh, on top of Gravium. It's implementation of Python 3. Uh, it's it's currently in early stages. The implementation started uh, uh, at the beginning of this year, uh, but it's progressing quickly because uh, we've been implementing uh, other many other languages on top of Gravium already. So we have quite some experience, and and we think we will manage to progress very quickly on this one. It's open source again and runs on both versions of Gravium. So I have uh, two sections here now. First one is more practical. That's uh, how you can combine programming languages with Gravium in practice. And the second one is how it works, more theoretical one. So uh, let me start with the more practical one. Uh, this is the syntax of how you uh, can use one language for another. Uh, this is a R code. Uh, 
uh, specifically fast our code, this won't run on, on GNUR. And we're using this, this built-in function that's called uh, eval.polyglot. Uh, first argument is a, is a string that identifies the language. The second argument is the source code for that language that's uh, going to be executed. So in this case, we're executing Ruby expression that uh, just returns a Ruby array. Now, notice that um, we're, we're, we're in the X variable in R, we, we, we're saving there a Ruby object. We're not converting that uh, Ruby array into R vector yet. We, we, we can just uh, use it as is, like a Ruby object. So there's no marshalling or copying going on. And uh, most of the built-ins in fa the R built-ins in FastR can work with arbitrary uh, objects coming from different languages. So in this case, we can just uh, so subset uh, the, the vector x, subscribe the vector x, and uh, get the second, get the first element. Yeah, uh, because it's R, it's one base indexing. Uh, another example is uh, pretty much the same, except we're using a different uh, um, d different uh, interface of the eval polygon function. The named argument path uh, lets you uh, lets lets you give their uh, a name of a file, and uh, the language is inferred from the extension. So in this case, we're uh, executing uh, some JavaScript that creates a JSON object. The JSON object is passed back to R, saved in the, to the X variable. Again, no marshalling, no data copying, and we can just uh, access uh, uh, one of the fields of the of the JSON object. And now a uh, Python example here. So uh, uh, aside from this uh, eval polyglot uh, interface, uh, there is also this thing uh, where you can uh, export objects from one language to sort of a, a global namespace where other languages can import them from. So in this, uh, in this case, the first uh, code sample is R, and we are exporting R object uh, under the name R obj. It's, it's a vector one, two, three. And then on the, on the Python uh, side, we're importing that with this uh, uh, polyglot import value. Uh, import is a, is a keyword in uh, Python, so it has to be import underscore value. Uh, in R, it's just import. And uh, this R value variable, again, is, is, it's R vector. It's, it's not going to be some Python object. It's, it's really going to be R vector. And uh, most of the Python functionality works with, with uh, what we call foreign uh, objects. Right, uh, so uh, what about performance? This, uh, this, uh, these solutions usually have poor performance, uh, often because they just use different, different programs and communi that communicate with each other through pipes or things like that. And, and in this case, we're running on the same platform. Uh, uh, earlier today on the FastR talk, I was showing this example. This is a ray tracing code for, by uh, Tyler Morgan Wall. And uh, it's a pure R code that's actually using this uh, Fortran function that uh, on the fast art, in the fast art talk, I, I rewrote that uh, Fortran function, which is over here. I rewrote it to um, R and showed that fast art can run the whole thing uh, faster than GNU R can run the R code with Fortran. Here, what I've done, I rewrote this whole thing into Python. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to run the whole thing, uh, the, the, the R code, and instead of calling into Fortran, we're going to call into Python, and let's see how, how this works. So this is uh, the, the chart that we've seen before, uh, except for that uh, we have two new da data points here. It's uh, a faster with uh, Graal Python and faster with Graal Python on the enterprise. Uh, so the, 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 the runtime of a pure R code on GNU R is about uh, 84 seconds. And with uh, Python, instead of Fortran, we can get to uh, 4.6 uh, seconds on the enterprise. Edition, uh, the community edition is uh, much worse. Uh, I think there uh, might be a bug that we haven't fixed yet, but uh, this shouldn't look like this. Uh, the community and enterprise edition should be much closer to each other. Uh, but anyway, uh, at the fast start talk, I was saying that uh, maybe we don't have to write Fortran or RCPP anymore. We should instead rewrite our Fortran code back to R. Uh, in this talk, I'm going to say maybe we can just rewrite our Fortran code to Python, and it's just going to be faster with FastR. And I have uh, two demos here. The first one is a uh, first one is a Shiny application that is uh, combining different programming languages. Uh, yeah, here it is. Uh, it shows a, a picture. Uh, a photo, and uh, this is the distribution of the color channels. And you can just display the picture, or you can rescale the picture. You can apply some filters to it, uh, things like that. Uh, 
compost filter. Uh, yeah. So anyway, let's take a look at the code. Uh, the entry point is a, this shiny file. Here you can see. Oh, let me maybe make this. Can you see the code? Ah. Uh, so here are the packages that we are using. Shiny let is great. Ggplot2. That's all that uh, fast I can run all this. Uh, and we do some plumbing with uh, paths just to make our lives, lives easier. And then we uh, source uh, UI.R and server.R. UI.R is uh, something that you'd expect. It's just a shiny definition of shiny UI. Uh, server R is uh, more interesting. We have uh, our server function over here that's uh, setting the, the image, that's the photo, and also the disk plot. The disk plot is a regular ggplot to a graph or plot. Uh, the image is more interesting here. So we take a look at the, f the, the function that we selected. If it is a display, we just uh, display the image using grid raster. If, it, if it we are about to rescale it, we call this rescale function, which is an R function defined somewhere here. So that's nothing unexpected yet. Uh, if we want to apply Sobel fil filter now, now it's going to get interesting. Uh, we choose the, the color channel. And uh, here are some objects that represent the color channels. It's image object R, image object G, image object B. And those are loaded. Those are loaded here. And we create them using the new function. Uh, we give it a class. Now, at this point, you would probably expect that the, this image class is S4 object, uh, S4 class. Uh, but in reality, uh, this is loaded from Python. So we get a, a reference to a class from Python. The class is called image. It's imported from the image underscore magics package. And we just save it into those well, different three different instances into those three, three different variables. And here we are. We choose one of those into this color image variable. And we just want to call a function or method of it. So we just use like you would normally. Uh, in our uh, add operator and call the function. Now let me show you the Python code. It's over here. Here is the class image. It's got some methods in it. And here it is, the Sobel uh, method. So that's what we are calling from R directly. Uh, let me go back. So what we get from this, uh, from this Sobel uh, method here is another Python object. We already know that this Python object has a field called uh, add data, so we can access it using the um, dollar operator. And we can work with it like with any other vector, so we can just divide it by 255. It's, this is going to create a new vector, in this case, actual R vector. Uh, it's going to have all these values divided by 255. And we just show the result. Uh, th the same is happening here with uh, the fisheye filter. Uh, again, we call a Python, Python function called uh, fisheye. Uh, and here is the last filter, which is called compose. And, and that's interesting. We're calling a function that's called compose. It's, it's, it's uh, our function that is defined over here. But uh, in this function, we, we loop over the image or the individual pixels. But uh, we are calling a function called compose C. And, and the name gives you a hint where this function comes from. Uh, Gravium, in like a site, uh, typical programming language that you're used to, like R, Python, JavaScript, etc. Uh, Gravium also supports LLVM. So LLVM uh, is, is this uh, tool chain for building C native applications. And with uh, Clank uses LLVM, for example. With Clank, if you build your C code, you get a native binary. But if you add few options, instead of native binary, binary you get something that's called bitcode. It's a machine-independent representation uh, of, of the native code. And Gravium can load those and execute them. Right, so here we, have, here we have the C code. This is the compose function that we're just uh, calling from, from R directly. Uh, we don't need to use the uh, .call interface uh, of R. But of course, if we wanted to, we can use that as well. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this here. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to stop this here. I'm going to run the same thing with an additional switch. 
inspect. Now it prints me uh, some URL. It starts with Chrome. So let's try Chrome. Just copy paste it here. The startup is going to take a while, but uh, after a while, something's going to happen. So uh, a startup uh, is a common problem of uh, uh, the programming languages implemented on top of GraalVM because uh, underneath it's all Java, and Java is not very known for a uh, fast startup. But uh, yeah, we have we have things to solve that. So it won't be any problem soon. Uh, this is uh, uh, Google Chrome development tools. You can just like step over things. Uh, I think I've put some breakpoints over here into the server file. So let's just run this whole thing. Uh, yeah, we have one minute left. Okay. Um, yeah. So now, now uh, all the packages are loading. Uh, the shiny app is starting. Uh, we're doing the initial things uh, with debugger attached. It takes a while. So here we can start the application. Yeah. And if we just go to compose, that's where I've put the breakpoint to. We should break somewhere soon. Uh, yeah, so I was uh, talking about the startup time. Uh, yeah, we have we have tools to solve this. Uh, we can compile the, the Java application into a native binary that is completely independent of Java and JVM and starts much faster. And here we are breaking on a, a line in the R code. And just one last thing that I want to show, I'll just go to the C code and here is a, another uh, breakpoint. I'll just carry on and we get to C code. So with this you can debug uh, your C code as well. Yeah, so uh, that's all we have uh, time for now. Uh, thank you for your attention.